Don Tricker, Director of, of Player Health and Performance, joins us, and this is the first time on the platform. So welcome to it, Don. Really good to have you back on board. Uh, my pleasure, Marty. Well, I always keep an eye on the Padres. Never been my favourite team, but with you in there, I've always keep an eye on them, and I think, wow, what's happening, and what's happening with Don's team? And you've made probably the best trade out of all of the teams, getting Juan Soto. What a great get he is. Yeah, it was, I mean... One is a uh, is a generational player, so it'll be a bit like again in a in a rugby context. Um, I don't know, Jonah Lomu or a Michael Jones or a Richie McCaw um, pops up, and you have an opportunity to get him, but it comes at a very steep price. Uh, and uh, we chose to um, to pretty much push all our chips in, and we secured uh, one side for the next two and a half years. Um, and then obviously with the hope that we may be able to re-sign him um, once he becomes a free agent. But to secure one, we had to give up uh, four or five of our very best young players. That was tough to do, but um, when you're talking about a generational player, it's something that you, you have to do. So the strategy behind this, is it very similar to the LA Rams? Is it all eggs in the basket of we want to win it today? No, we, we, it, it's two things like that. Yeah, we want to win it um, today, um, but we don't want to compromise our, our ability to win it next year and the year after that and the year after that. So you still have to, you know, you, you put all your chips in, um, and which is, again, why we've got one for two and a half years. So we've got three years or three pennant chases um, with, uh, with Juan Soto in the lineup, um, with Fernando Tatis when he comes back from injury, uh, with Manny Machado. Um, with uh, pitching that we've got. Um, so we're looking pretty uh, good depth for the next three years. And then it gives us three years to rebuild from within so that we can have a sustained run over the next you know, eight to ten years. How much did you have you directly with this trade? Well, I was, I was in the room. Um, we have our pro scouts who go out there and they evaluate all the players. And, um, and my role in there was in terms of just providing um, um, a different voice around in terms of, uh, uh, I guess, the risks with, uh, with going all in on this trade in terms of what the cost is to us, what are the other options. So we considered all those um, and um, yeah, certainly part of the conversations. Don Tricker, Director of Player Health and Performance San Diego, San Diego Padres, is with us. I remember Don having this conversation with you, a similar kind of conversation when Manny Machado was hired. And, and you know, and you, you, you can only from this distance get what you read in, in, the, in the press and the media and all of that kind of stuff. And he was a guy that, you know, it was always talked about had baggage. And I remember talking to you about this, about, you know, I don't know whether it's called a no dickheads policy or whatever, but would he fit into your team? Would he fit into your lineup? Would he fit into your clubhouse? Did you have to go through the same kind of thought processes with Juan Soto, find out what kind of bloke that he is and what kind of teammate he can be? Yeah, and that's all part of the, the you know, the due diligence that you go through. Because it's certainly, um, you can have, if you recruit on talent alone, um, you know, that'll excite you. Um, you know, when the, the team runs out to, to play. Um, but if there's baggage with them, it, it's really exhausting. And it's a drain on the coaches, a drain on the rest of the staff, and eventually you suffer. So, yeah, in terms of, um, you know, that's what our part of our pro scouts team, they go in and they understand the human being. Um, you know, they talk to the people that are close to them. Um, they also watch them um, when he's not playing. Um, we get all that information back in, and that's all part of the decision-making process in terms of we need to... We need to have the right people um, in our environment um, and um, you know, an exceptional ball player who's not quite made of the right stuff. Um, it's just too tough. And then, you know, you look at the NFL and the case of somebody like Deshaun Watson, who just, it just horrifies me, and it still does, that despite what he's done and despite the obvious guilt, even though he may not be convicted in court, that the Browns don't give a stuff about it. They turn a blind eye as long as the guy can rush past and hopefully win games for them. I mean, how do how do you how do you see that? And how do you know? Would you would you ever look at a guy like that and go, oh, okay, despite all that, we'd still buy a guy like that? Yeah, and I guess it comes down to what you what you stand for as, as an organisation. Um, I can't speak um, for the Browns. I can only um, you know, view them from a um, from afar. But I can say that in terms of our um, owner Peter Seidler, um, you know, what's important to him is good people. What's important to him. Is people that uh, make a um, you know, add value to the communities that they um, you know, they are a part of. So um, you know, I can't see a Peter Seidler signing off on anything um, 
uh, any player, no matter how good they are, if they come with um, you know, that type of baggage. Machado, Tatis, as you say, one Soto. I mean, you've got three absolute superstars. You got your, your pitching there as well. How much time do these guys get? I mean, in terms of what you want to achieve is obviously the, the ultimate, getting to a World Series, winning that World Series, getting to the playoffs. I know you've been in a couple of World Series, but the club's only been had six playoff appearances in 50 years. So making it through all, all of that, how much time do you give these guys? It is, I mean, it's, it's tough to make the playoffs, and that's the thing about... Um, you know, professional sport is uh, it's hard to win. Um, you know, New Zealand's going through that right now in terms of the All Blacks have dominated for a number of years and the other teams have got better. Um, and in baseball, um, there's a, we play 162 games. So if, if you can lose 60 to 62 games a year, you're the best team in baseball. And any team can beat any team. Um, so so what we're looking for is, is putting those um, you know, consistent performances out there um, that, that we win more than we lose. And, and it's again, it's just ensuring that uh, no, no real surprises is that ensure that our, our big guys um, uh, contribute to get us to the playoffs, but they need to be fresh enough to be able to win um, the big games in the playoffs. If, if we get to the, the playoffs and our, and our big guys are exhausted, we're not going to go very deep into the playoffs. So we need to use our depth so that um, you know, we um, give ourselves the best chance to win every night. And, um, and sometimes um, our, our best players don't provide us with our best chances to win on any given night if they've been overplayed. So we do need to give them a break every once in a while. Yeah, the Director of Player Health and Performance for the San Diego, San Diego Padres, Don Tricker, is with us. On the platform, I was, I was really um, interested in reading those same kind of similar comments from Manny Machado after getting swept by the Dodgers. Uh, you know, I, you know, half of me was thinking, oh, he must be bummed out about that. But he actually kind of was quite philosophical about it, saying, hey, look, you know, we still believe mano on mano that we can compete with these guys. Uh, it might be, what, two out of 14 or 15 that you've only won against them this year. But none of that counts. It's like it's, it's like the Giants last year winning that division on the last day and then they lose to them in the playoffs. It is only about the playoffs, isn't it? Yeah, you, you got to again. It's like um, you've got to get to the playoffs, um, and um, in in baseball, um, in basketball, um, or pretty much every professional sport in the states, the best team doesn't necessarily win the world title. It's the team that's playing the best at that time of year. So right now, we ran into the the Dodgers over the last three days, and the Dodgers were phenomenal. Um, and um, so, and we were nowhere near what, in terms of playing to our potential. So one would think that um, or that we get it, put our get the the right amount of work into the players. Um, we improve, um, and every time we play against the Dodgers, um, we get a little bit better. And they may not play um, to the level that they they, they produced over the weekend. Um, so, and that's all we can do is, but you can't win the World Series if you're not in the playoffs. So for us, it's about um, you know taking care of the Giants tonight. We got a, ser- a three-game series against the Giants. Then we uh, we're off to Washington for three games, and then off to Miami, and then back here again, and off we go again. So third in the wild card standings at the moment. You can't win the division. I mean, it's 15 games. You're not going to make that up. But that wild card race is a real race going on at the moment isn't it and just to explain to people so the division winners the three division winners in in each of the leagues national and american leagues go straight through now there's three wild card teams isn't it three plays two and then the winner of that plays one and that team then plays the best placed or the best finisher finisher out of the divisions so what i'm trying to say here is you add two plus two plus two plus two if you do get through that it's the dodgers isn't it in the first round yeah, I mean, we're going to have to, um, well, someone's going to have to beat the Dodgers. So it's, uh, for us, it's, we just got to beat, we, one, we've got to get to the playoffs, and then we've just got to beat whoever, whoever we face. And, and in reality, it doesn't matter, um, because all the teams at that time of year are going to be really tough. Um, so so no, no, no result would be a surprise once you get to the playoffs. It's like, oh, yeah, I could see that happening. Right. Um, and so, but yeah, for us, it's, you know the Dodgers are in our division, so you know everything for us. We have to go go through the Dodgers, but then again, we can't overlook the Giants tonight. And um, um, and any team that we play, you can't look. No team loses. Um, you have to win your games. So there's not a team that will play out there that rolls over for the Padres and goes, "Oh, we're playing the Padres." 
let's look past them and look at the next um, the, the next game. Is that no team's wired that way? So you have to show up and play. Look, I, I, just, I, I absolutely love it. And what I love about baseball is the imperfection of it. If you get a 300 batting average, that means seven times out of 10, you strike out, you don't hit to base. And that's considered good. It's like cricket, isn't it, mate? It's a game of failure almost. You know, you have more fails than you do wins. Now you're, now you're sounding like a, an American rolling out cliche. <laughs> um, and that's, that's, and that, that's one of the, you know, the traditions of the sport. And the sad thing is that uh, what you've just said is pretty much what um, every kid in America says, oh, baseball's a game of failure. And what we're trying to do here at the Padres is we're trying to change the narrative is that baseball's a game of opportunity. Is there aren't many sports um, that if you, um, you, you don't get things right, you get a chance to, put, um, to correct them in 15 minutes or so. So it's like we always look forward to our next opportunity as opposed to looking backwards at what's just happened. And, and that's, again, where, you know, you talk about Manny Machado. We went into the, the, the Dodgers and we got smashed. They beat us um, uh, three games up in L.A. Um, but we've got to put that stuff behind us. We've got to pick out what are one or two things that we need to work on. We've got to push that behind us and move forward because there's no, there's no time to wallow in self-pity because we've got the Giants in town tonight. Mm. Don Trigger is with us. HP manager for New Zealand Rugby for many, many years, and you're in your fifth season now at the Padres. And I was just, you know, after these, this trade, and I knew that you'd be involved in that, and I was just thinking the strategies around player trade and recruitment, do you look back at your time in New Zealand rugby and still look at rugby as a sport and think, man, it's so entrenched still in amateurism. You know, we, we have a, a rugby comp down here where Super Rugby won't allow overseas uh, coaches into our teams. Getting an overseas player is really difficult. Our players aren't allowed to play for another overseas team. I mean, when you think about professional sport, there's quite a nonsense, a lot of these things. Do you think looking from your side back in now? It depends on what you're trying to do, what, what your strategy is. So if, um, if your strategy is, is about um, you know, building the best base for the All Blacks to be successful, then maybe not. It's like, so, and, and you want, in terms of, again, you want your best coaches. You do want um, um, diversity in your coaching in terms of different ideas, different ways of doing things. So I think in terms of if you can manage that, in terms of bring, and this is, again, where New Zealand coaches go offshore and, and then hopefully they find their way back to New Zealand um, and they bring all those ideas back. Um, but if I, if I look at it in terms of um, you know, some of the things that New Zealand, when I reflect on New Zealand rugby, it's like I think they could do some form of draft and I absolutely think there could be some form of trading. Um, it's like if you think about, and this is a, going back a few years, the, the Crusaders had all the number 10s in New Zealand. Yes. And it... It made, it made no sense that they stockpiled them and they might have been short of a, I don't know, a loose sport or something. So wouldn't it be nice if uh, we could go into a trade and, and a team could trade a, a number six for a number 10? Um, yeah. And then that's, in, that, again, in the best interest of New Zealand rugby because now you've got um, you know, the best players playing um, instead of just being stockpiled and sitting on the bench. And it also creates some excitement. And then the draft side of it is that... Um, you know, we've got all these kids coming out of high school. And I was like, well, can we do something to spice that up? Mm. If you're the, still a high performance manager, you'd be in, up to your eyeballs in this whole coaching conundrum down here, mate. So, you know, do you, do you have to deal with that kind of yeah. stuff over with the Padres? Uh, absolutely. It's the whole thing. It's the, um, you know, every day we, um, you know, we, we're trying to get better. So, and, um, you know, the, the, the catalyst to get better, one is that you need to have players who take ownership of their own performance and players who want to get better. Um, and then you need to have coaches who can partner up with the players um, to create the, um, you know, the right environment um, um, to ensure that the athletes um, do have the best chance of, of being successful. How much of it? Um, you Sorry, know, keep you, going. You, I was just going to say, you're, you're, you're a sports nut. Is the Jeter um, documentary in New yep. Zealand yet? Yep, it is, yep. You, you, you need to be watching that stuff. That is gold. Yeah, look, I, I, I find it so hard to watch anything about the Yankees, but I, I force my, force yeah, my, yeah. Force my yeah, way through the, it because I am a sports fiend. And so I was, I was just, look, I was, the way that he came into the team, the way that, you know, he was he was absolutely and utterly uh, exalted to start with. But then, of course, he didn't perform to start with. They didn't know. And then he became Derek Jeter. And he just became a weapon. In the end, he was as ruthless as Michael Jordan. That's what really got me about him, Don. Just his absolute yeah. insane addiction to winning. And, he, and again, he's, he, there are lots and lots of little one-liners in there. I mean, one of the things that um, when I watched it the other day was the, the line that, that he was given the big apple, but he had the discipline to take small, small nibbles, never a big bite. So the big apple never got in the way of performance. 
So you think about a lot of our young players in New Zealand um, who all of a sudden become you know, the, um, a superstar in New Zealand. Uh, you, know, you still need, have, need to have the discipline to go, OK, yeah, I recognise all this fame, um, but I'm not going to let it get in the way of performance. And that was how driven he is. Um, so so he, he's, again, for, you know, for a bunch of New Zealand sports fans, get an opportunity to watch that. And those are the types of guys. I mean, it's, it's the Derek Jeters, the Richie McCaws. They're all cut of the same cloth. Um, and if you have those types of players, you know, as coaches, you pretty much get out of their way because they'll, they'll figure out what needs to be done. A pleasure, as always, talking to you. I won't take up any much more of your time. I'd love to sit down again and, and do this again. Uh, just uh, brilliant, mate. I mean, I, your, your, your brain is it just, it, it works wonders. I love listening to you. You're such a deep thinker about all of this, and I'm so pleased with the success that you're having too, and I hope the Padres can match that for you. Well, that would be pretty nice. So, um, yeah, if we, if we get a shot um, at the playoffs, so again, I can, I can explain to you how it all works so, and what it's really like. But uh, yeah, all we've got to do is win tonight, and that's that's all. That's the only thing we've got control over.